Hello again. This is Math 1120 coming to you from the College of DuPage. The title of this lecture is Attenuation, Impedance, and Reflection uh, Coefficients and such. And uh, as always, please be an attentive learner while you watch this video. As you may remember, attenuation is a process whereby sound energy is extracted from a wave by absorption, scattering, and reflection. Total attenuation depends upon the frequency of the sound, the distance the beam travels, and the tissue through which the sound wave travels. We talked about we measured um, uh, attenuation in dBs. Uh, it can be difficult to compare the amount of attenuation under different circumstances. A term that has simplified the reporting of attenuation is the attenuation coefficient. The attenuation coefficient is the number of decibels, dBs, of attenuation that occur when sound travels one centimeter. Uh, the units of attenuation coefficient are dB per centimeter, decibels per centimeter, and it depends on the medium that you're in. The advantage of describing uh, sound uh, weakening with an attenuation coefficient is its value remains constant regardless of how far the sound travels as long as the medium is the same. But what you can see up here is that higher frequency sound undergoes more attenuation and has less penetration than lower frequency sound. In other words, if the attenuation coefficient of a sound wave traveling at a specific tissue is 2 dB per centimeter, the per centimeter value will remain constant regardless of the distance traveled uh, by the wave as long as you're in the same medium. Here's some numerical examples. For example, when sound travels to a depth of 5 centimeters, the attenuation coefficient remains 2, B, 2 dB per centimeter, and the total attenuation of the beam is now 10 dB because it's the product of 5 centimeters times 2 dB per centimeter. At a dip, depth of 10 centimeters, the attenuation coefficient is still 2 dB per centimeter, whereas the total attenuation now increases to 20 dB. And by the way, we can also do calculations because we know how to work with the dBs. When the attenuation coefficient is known, it's straightforward to determine the total attenuation of a sound wave as it travels. Simply multiply the attenuation coefficient by the distance the sound wave travels. And you can see our total attenuation in dB is the attenuation coefficient dB per centimeter times the distance in centimeters. In soft tissue, the attenuation coefficient dB per centimeter and the frequency megahertz are directly related. Specifically, the attenuation coefficient is one half the frequency. So this is an equation. The attenuation coefficient in soft tissue in terms of dB per centimeters is the frequency divided by um, two. Now you should uh, realize that the units are not going to match here because it is a numerical match, not um, not uh, uh, something else because the attenuation coefficient is dB per centimeter. And uh, this is um, frequency, which is in hertz, uh, and that is just 2. Uh, but then the, you could say that the attenuation coefficient, though, and I'm saying this a different way, is, uh, and now I am dealing with the units, is 0.5 dB per centimeter per megahertz. So you see the units really are a little bit tricky here. This relationship is not surprising since we know that the scattering and absorption are directly related to frequency. That is, as the frequency increases, scattering and absorption increase. And the equation at the right applies to sound waves traveling in soft tissue. These mathematical equations illustrate what is already known. For each centimeter the sound travels, more energy is lost from high frequency sound than from low frequency sound.
We also have attenuation in media other than soft tissue. And here's some examples. And again, we don't quote numbers here, although there are numbers that happen. This just talks about being low or high. So in water, the attenuation is low. Blood, urine, and biological fluids is also low because they're close to water. Not extremely low, but low. In fat, it is low. Soft tissue, it is intermediate. Muscle has a higher attenuation. Bones and lung are even higher, and in air, there's an extremely high attenuation coefficient. Compared to soft tissue, air has an extremely high attenuation rate, and uh, sound with frequencies above 1 megahertz attenuate entirely with distance. Uh, the principal mechanism of attenuation in the air is absorption. Similarly, in the lung, they attenuate dramatically because of scattering and absorption uh, dealing with the way lungs are structured. Bone absorbs ultrasound energy to a large extent and results in substantial attenuation. Biologic fluid, which includes blood, urine, and ambiotic fluid, all attenuate sound. The attenuation is far less than that found in soft tissue. Finally, no noticeable attenuation of ultrasound with frequencies less than 10 megahertz is observed in water. Attenuation in muscle is especially interesting. The attenuating properties vary depending on whether the sound waves are traveling along the muscle fibers or across the muscle fibers. Sound attenuates twice as much when traveling across the fibers as when traveling along the length of the fibers. Another term that helps simplify the discussion of attenuation is half-value layer thickness. The half-value layer thickness is the distance sound travels in a tissue that reduces the intensity of sound to one-half the original value. The half-value layer, half layer may also be described in as the depth of tissue that results in 3 dB of attenuation to the intensity. And you remember 3 dB takes you down by half units. The units of half value layer um, thickness are in centimeters or any other unit of length. Typical values in ultrasound and clinical imaging range from 0.25 to 1 centimeter. There are synonyms for this, um, this thing. Um, it's known by other names, including penetration depth, depth of penetration, and half boundary layer. The half, half value layer thickness depends on two factors, the medium and the frequency of the sound. The half value layer is thin for tissues that attenuate sound a great deal, such as lungs or bones. Higher frequency also results in a thinner half value layer. The half value layer is thicker for tissues that attenuate sound just a little, such as fluids. Lower frequency sound also results in a thicker half value layer. And here, uh, qualitatively, we talk about um, that um, it's thin when it is high frequency, or you're in a media with a high attenuation rate. And it is uh, thick when we are low frequency in a media with low attenuation rate. Now we've talked about reflection and transmission, but before uh, we've talked about angles and, uh, and ref refraction, things like that, Snell's Law, here are some additional considerations. The reflection produced as a sound wave moves from one medium to another from the basis for ultrasound imaging. In fact, you get the refracted signal uh, back, and that's what you're measuring. And so this is important. In addition, transmission is critical to uh, ultrasound's ability to image structures located deep in the body. The acoustic impedance, that's a new word, is an important tissue property that influences the amount of reflection. So you see when this wave hits, some of it is reflected, but some of it continues into the other medium. These are different mediums. This is uh, yellow and this is blue. So more, so more about the impedance. 
Impedance is the acoustic resistance to sound traveling in a medium. Acoustic impedance is calculated by multiplying the density of a medium by the speed at which sound travels in the medium. Impedance is a calculated number associated with a medium through which sound travels. Reflection of an ultrasound wave depends upon the difference in acoustic impedance of the two mediums at a boundary. Note again, I know I said it once, but a tissue's impedance is calculated, not measured. Uh, impedance is reported in units of rails. This is R-A-Y-L-S. And impedance is often represented by the letter Z. Now, a rail, though, is a kilogram per cubic meter times the propagation speed, which is meters per second. So if you think about this, um, the rail uh, is going to be a kilogram per meter squared times second. So that's uh, kind of a definition of it. Typical values. In biologic media, media uh, typical values for uh, impedance range from uh, 1 million... Uh, 250,000 to 1 uh, times seven, uh, 750,000 rails, and this is a 1.25 to um, 1.75, and this is mega rails. Impedance is associated with the medium only. It is calculated, not measured, and it's determined by the medium. And synonyms for this are acoustic impedance is sometimes called characteristic impedance. And this, I think, is a uh, repeat of an earlier slide, so I'll let it go along. Okay, so here's some questions that review what we have. So name three components of attenuation, absorption, reflection, and scattering. These are like um, the kind of things that you have on your certification exams. As the path length increases, the attenuation in, of ultrasound in soft, link, in, uh, soft tissue increases. Attenuation in lung tissue is less than, greater than, or the same as attenuation in soft tissue. It's greater than because of the structure. Attenuation in bone is greater than attenuation in soft tissue. Attenuation in air is greater than attenuation in soft tissue. What are the units of attenuation? The units of attenuation are decibels, dB. This is a true or false question. In a given medium, atten um, attenuation is unrelated to the speed of sound. True. Attenuation and propagation speed are not related. What is the relationship between ultrasound frequency and the attenuation coefficient in soft tissue? In soft tissue, the attenuation coefficient in dBs per centimeter is approximately one half of the ultrasound frequency in megahertz. What are the units of the half value layer thickness? It's distance, it's centimeters. As frequency decreases, the depth of penetration increases. As the path length increases, the half uh, boundary layer remains the same. Impedance is associated with only the medium. As the path length increases, the attenuation coefficient of ultrasound in soft tissue, its multiple choice, remains the same as the attenuation coefficient. And acoustic impedance is equal to density times propagation speed. And uh, if this is in rails, uh, it is a kilogram per cubic meter times, and this is in meters per second. Uh, if you have two medium A and B that have the same density, and the speed of sound in medium A is 10% higher than in medium B, which medium has the higher acoustic impedance? Medium A's acoustic uh, impedance is higher than medium B because it's uh, equal to the product. So if one is 10% higher, then the uh, uh, impedance is also 10% higher. Impedance is important in reflections at boundaries. And which is better to use when examining an artery, a 7.5 or a 3.0 megahertz transducer? 
The cardioid artery is a superficial structure, so at 7.5 megahertz transducer is better because it produces a better image. We can use the higher frequency transducer in this example because the structure is superficial and attenuation is of little concern. We continue our discussion of uh, incident reflected and transmitted sound. So you see it comes in, some of it is reflected and some of it continues. So uh, we will talk about a, a term that we uh, have to talk have, have not yet talked about. It's called incident intensity. We've talked about what intensity is, though, and that's the green that's shown here. The reflected intensity in red is the intensity of the portion of the incident sound beam that, after striking a boundary, returns back from where it came from. The transmitted intensity, which is the purple, it goes on after striking the boundary. There is a conservation of energy. As a result, the incident intensity, and remember that intensity is power per square centimeter, or per um, area anyway, uh, equals the reflected plus the transmitted intensities. Uh, so the incident intensity is equal to the reflected intensity plus the transmitted intensity. And remember that all intensities have units of watts per, and here we're taking this to be square centimeters. Now, we define then um, a, another term that's called the intensity reflection coefficient, or IRC. The intensity reflection coefficient is the percentage of the intensity that bounces back when a sound wave strikes the boundary between two medium. Uh, in clinical imaging, very little, 1% or less, of a sound wave's intensity is reflected at a boundary between two soft tissues. But they're much larger when you hit a bone or uh, or, or um, uh, air. That's one of the reasons you use gel because you you have the air meeting with soft tissue. So you use the gel to do um, to use a fancy term impedance matching. Uh, so intensity reflection and intensity transmission coefficients uh, are percentages. So the intensity transmission coefficient is um, the percentage of the intensity that passes forward. Passes forward. when the beam strikes uh, an interface between two. And here we talked about this can be uh, numbers close to one or smaller when you're striking a bone. The coefficients IRC and ITC are both percentages. Realize that our IRC uh, is what is the percentage that's reflected. This is the percentage that goes forward. Keep those two things straight, please. They're both dimensionless, they're percentages. As a sound beam uh, strikes a boundary, uh, energy is conserved and 100% of the intensity must be accounted for. Again, 100% is the sum of the intensity uh, reflection coefficient and the intensity transmission coefficient. Uh, at the boundary between medium then, we have conservation of energy. Uh, if you add these two, uh, you get the incident intensity, and uh, they equal 100%. And they're, again, reported in watts per square meter. So here's a couple of questions then. A sound wave with intensity of 50 watts per centimeter strikes a boundary, and it's totally reflected. What is the intensity reflection coefficient? Well, it's 100%. A sound wave with an intensity of 50 uh, watts per centimeter strikes a boundary and is totally uh, reflected. What is the reflected uh, intensity? And this is, uh, since the uh, intensity is totally reflected, the reflected intensity is still 50 watts per square meter. We have reflection, uh, we have no refraction, but we do have reflection when we hit something perpendicularly. And so when a sound, babe uh, when a sound beam strikes a tissue boundary at 90 degrees, normal incident, reflection occurs only if the media on either side of the boundary have different impedances. 
The percentage of the incident beam that is reflected is related to the difference in the impedance of the two. No reflection will occur if the two have identical impedance. Remember, we talked about impedance in terms of rails. A small reflection will occur if they're only slightly different, and a larger will occur if they're substantially different. Recall that the intensity reflection coefficient is the percentage of the intensity bounced back when the beam passes from one medium to another. With normal intensities, uh, with normal incidence, we use this equation here. So the intensity reflection coefficient in terms of percentage is going to be Z2, the second medium, minus Z1, the impedance. So the impedance here minus the impedance there, divided by the sum of the two impedances, and you square that entire quantity times 100%. I have asked questions about this equation, so you want to be able to work with this. And here are some more um, uh, questions. Uh, Pulse of ultrasound uh, is propagating through soft tissue. It strikes a boundary with a different type of soft tissue. Not much happens because they're both soft tissue. Uh, sound is traveling in a medium and strikes a boundary with normal intensity. If 63 is reflected back, what percentage is transmitted? It's going to be 37 because it has to add to 100%. A pulse of ultrasound is propagating and strikes an interface with soft tissue at 90%. A giant reflection is created. Based on one of these facts, what can be said about the impedance of the bone? And what can be said about the impedance of the soft tissue? And what can be said about the difference? Well, nothing can be said about the impedance of the bone or soft tissue, but the difference is large because there was a significant reflection. And with this one, uh, sound strikes a, a boundary between two medias orthogonally. That means perpendicularly. Uh, although the medium are very different, no reflection is created. How can that be? Well, with normal incident, reflections occur only when the impedance are different. Two different media could have the same impedances. Uh, we also will be talking about the intensity transmission coefficient, and that's the percentage of the intensity now this is different uh, than what we were talking about before, but it's the intensity that continues forward. Uh, so that is what was transmitted into the other one. And so that it's the transmitted intensity divided by the intensity, and that is one minus the intensity reflection coefficient. And that's a, that's a um, conservation of energy kind of, um, kind of thing. So again, intensity transmission coefficient and intensity reflection coefficients. Uh, sound is traveling from bone to soft tissue. Uh, the impedance differ significantly in 90% of the beam's intensity is reflected. So what's transmitted? Well, it has to be 10% transmitted. Sound is traveling through jello and it goes into whipped cream. Uh, the impedance is nearly identical, so what percent is transmitted? They give you a choice here. Uh, most of it is transmitted because the impedance of jello and whipped cream are pretty identical. Oh, uh, here are some more questions uh, dealing with that. Uh, let's see, here's a picture medium one and medium two. So a uh, Sound pulse travels in medium one and strikes an interface with another tissue medium two at 30 degrees. The angle of transmission is 10%. In which medium is the impedance higher? Well, refraction happens at a boundary, but it's unrelated un, um, to the impedance of the media. Therefore, given the information provided, you cannot determine which media has a greater com, um, impedance. But you should note that refraction is affected by the speed of the sound, and we have equations that Snell's law for that. Uh, here, sound travels in a medium orthogonally and strikes a boundary with different medium. Although the sound waves traveling in the medium have different speeds, there is no refraction. How could this be? Well, with a normal incident, refraction does not occur. Refraction only occurs when there are different speeds and oblique at an angle incident. Both conditions must be met. And in this case, 
refraction can not occur. A sound loss strikes a boundary with normal incident. The impedance of the two media are identical. What percentage of the sound wave is refracted? Remember, refraction doesn't happen with normal incidence, so the answer to this is C, zero. And last but not least, the impedance of medium one is eight rails. The propagation speed is this number. Uh, the impedance of medium two is six rails, and the speed is this. A sound uh, beam strikes the boundary and the media and is both partially transmitted and reflected. The angle of incident is 30 degrees. What is the reflection angle? It's also 30 degrees. The angle of incident equals the angle of reflection. We could have asked questions about the uh, rails, but we were not doing so. Uh, more questions, and some of these questions have to do with uh, the picture up here, you got medium 1, medium 2, medium 3, and medium 4, and you have different uh, numbers associated with um, these. Actually, you see that all of these medium have 3.5 dB per centimeter, but you have, and some of them have uh, different um, uh, velocities, and some of them have different rails values. So, what does... Uh, 100 watt, um, let's see, milliwatts per uh, centimeter represent. That's intensity. Uh, what does 3.5 dB per centimeter uh, represent? That's the attenuation coefficient. If the media are soft tissue, what's the estimate of the ultrasound frequency? Well, it's about 7 hertz because the attenuation coefficient multiplied by 2 approximates the frequency. We had an equation for that, and so that's around 7. Uh, what property has units of rails? Um, remember, we, we talked about that, and, uh, and, and, and the rails um, are um, impedance. The uh, incident between the sound wave and the boundary between 1 and 2 is normal. What happens to the boundary between mediums 1 and 2? Both reflection and transmission occur. These are normal in, uh, incident and different acoustic impedances. Uh, you see the impedances are different here for those two. Uh, let's see what happens between two and three. It's transmission only. The impedances are the same. So there's transmission. Uh, what type of incident is there between three and four? Uh, it is oblique because you have the uh, velocities are different. And also the, the rails are different. Uh, what happens at the boundary between 3 and 4? Uh, reflection may occur. If transmission occurs, the sound beam will refract because there are different propagation speeds and oblique incidents. And what, pro, uh, what processes occur as the ultrasound passes through all the medium? And what are the units of the process? Well, we get attenuation happens. And the units are dB. And that could be scattering, absorption, and reflection. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all on this together. May God bless you all.